permiso, buenas tardes. Good afternoon everybody, hello, how are you? English teachers, go to this streaming, okay? Um, as usual, every Saturday, Saturday we have uh, our gaminers, uh, webinars in contribution to the EFL community. So today we have uh, Paola Santa Maria. She is an EFL teacher in uh, Yacha University. So uh, we are going to learn a very interesting topic. So Paola will um, explain us the topic that she will uh, share with us so teachers you can also ask questions you have the opportunity to write your questions in the chat okay i prefer you can do it at the end when you uh, we are going to have uh, we're going to have time to to ask questions and also you can interact okay so during this time i hope you are going to to be mute in order uh, to paola she can uh, explain us okay so paola Welcome. It's a pleasure to be your presence here. Thank you, Andrea. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure being here this afternoon in order to contribute with the EFL community, as you said. Uh, this is something, uh, part of our job, right? To give a hand when it's possible. And I hope uh, this afternoon to, that, to give you a hand with some of the, the, the research that I have been uh, doing throughout this, uh, these years. I, I really, be, I'm, I'm very interested in special educational needs and that's why I have been focusing on that. And now that we are hit now facing pandemic time and trying to get into online classes with usual basis, uh, I would like also to know, you know, it, it, I think it's, it's very useful for us when having special educational needs students in our classrooms to know how we can handle that, how we can address online or remote classes with this student. So that is exactly what today with assistive technology I'm going to be sharing with you. Okay, thank you so much Paola for that introduction. Um, if you require to use this, uh, you're going to present your slides. Okay, let me... Uh, okay, let me see. I can share with you my presentation so we can start right away. Okay, perfect. Now I'm a... Okay. Okay. Okay, oh, let me just put in presentation mode and let's begin. As Andres told you, uh, um, I would be uh, very pleased uh, to answer all, to all of the questions that you may have uh, and of course to share any comments, any suggestions uh, that you would have uh, in the end and of course to contribute and to increase any knowledge that uh, you may have uh, to contribute to this topic which is assistive technology to teach students with a special educational need during pandemic. So, um, as we all know, it is very difficult and it has been very difficult for all of us teachers uh, when being in the regular basis within or four walls in the classroom to address uh, learning to special educational needs. Uh, the reality of our classroom is that we have uh, probably in public schools uh, within 40 to 50 students, uh, school level, high school level, uh, and within this group of students, having regular students, let's call them this way, okay, and these special educational needs students. So, um, serving students with a special needs, it's already a challenge having them in a regular basis. Uh, let's try to imagine now how difficult or how challenging it's uh, coming and it would be for students just, uh, you know, uh, starting, teachers starting to teach, uh, especially in Highlands, that they will start like in two weeks, uh, having these students within the same groups, but now online. So uh, trying to meet these accommodations and modifications through a computer and of course depending on the need that uh, these students or these students may have, it's going to be really hard and I know that it sounds uh, like impossible because uh, it's really hard when we are within the classroom. So now we need to figure out you know, how to do it and where to start uh, during uh, the pandemic 
uh, and having them through a computer. So taking this into consideration, um, we first need to know a little bit of the background uh, in order to identify what uh, is special educational needs are. Because according to what we have specified in the law and what we have uh, experienced uh, within our classroom, uh, we can identify two different types of needs, okay? The ones that are permanent and the other ones which are temporary, okay? And these two kinds may be associated with uh, disabilities or not, okay? So, meaning disabilities, when we associate a need with a physical, okay, uh, disability, and when we talk about educational needs, more or less within the classroom, with a regular basis, having intellectual disabilities into uh, talking about special educational needs, okay? So, some of us teachers may just have a, a, a students with a special educational needs talking about intellectual ones, and we also may have students with disabilities talking about the physical ones, or both together in the same classroom, okay? So we need to deal with this, to cope with this, okay, within the same group of students without taking into account that besides this, beyond this issue, uh, we will have to cope also with uh, the things that uh, they may not have within the regular basis, the same level of things. Okay, so th those will be all the challenges that we will have to be facing, including the special needs in our students. Okay, so in order to um, try to cope with these uh, challenges, these characteristics of a classroom, uh, there has been developing around the world with the specialists, professionals, and of course educators, a group of uh, let's see, uh, let's call them tools, okay, which are called assistive technology in order to deal with uh, online teaching during the pandemic addressed to these students with special educational needs. Uh, Cause without having this, um, uh, this situation, this environment of having a student with remote classes, uh, assistive technology has been used with uh, a student with a special education needs at their home. But now they are going to be part of us teachers in order to develop uh, us throughout the environment of the classroom, through a computer, and with, of course, the support of parents. This is something that we as teachers need to take into account considerably. It's not the same having these a special educational needs students in your classroom having the whole control of us. Because as, as you know, the educational system that we have is not the same as the one overseas. Most of the educational systems overseas, uh, they consider, they include an assistant within the classroom in order to handle and manage these special educational needs in the classroom. But in our case, we don't have that. There's like in, in our basis, uh, teachers have to deal with the, the whole group. And somehow, DESE, which is the organization in, in, within the classrooms now, in charge, will let you know what educational needs some of the students have, if they have reported before. But if they haven't reported out, then uh, we as teachers are the ones that, say, that you know, uh, realize throughout the learning process that a special student or some special students are having trouble and we, with our knowledge, uh, probably scarce knowledge, realize that these students are having an educational need. And we teachers are the ones that report to Vesta in order for them to do something. And then we, we just receive some kind of suggestions, considerations for evaluation or assessment then we really don't know or are not aware on how to do those things specifically. And of course, the environment and the basis that we use in educational systems are not the same that we have here in Ecuador. So taking all those considerations, uh, I have think, uh, well, I have thought about um, separating some strategies that I have used in the past since when I was uh, a teacher, not only for high school but for school and I had to work for many years with special students with different special needs and now I put them into practice 
uh, with assistive technology for the ones that are having online classes with this special feature. Okay, so in this in this context, this assistive technology that I'm telling you about has been growing a lot now during the pandemic. Okay, and they have become a dynamic field, definitely. Okay, so there are several areas of assistive technology that we may use when we have students with the special education needs. Okay, and also there are some uh, products, uh, special devices, and, and mechanisms that we may use or we may suggest or uh, part to buy if the possibility, you know, the kind of possibility is there open. Because this is something that occurs beyond having our public student education. Uh, we may suggest if the possibility assist us if you have you know, uh, probably private at the school, teachers they are outside and probably learning from us today, okay? So, uh, let me begin uh, telling you a little bit more about exactly what the system technology is, okay? So, uh, system technology is a tool, okay, that can help our, our students with certain needs, okay, to learn more effectively, okay? So uh, we may encounter, as I was telling you, ranging in sophistication from low technologies, okay, such as graphic organizer worksheets, okay, to high technologies, uh, which include cutting edge software and smartphone apps, which luckily most of them are free. And I'm gonna share with you some of them also today, so you may now encounter a little bit useful bit to be used and included in your in your class. So let's begin with the most popular ones and the ones that uh, are um, most used because of the um, need that I'm going to talk about now, which is uh, dyslexia, okay, which I think is the most common one within a classroom, okay, uh, so this, this kind of uh, technology, of, so, um, of assistive technology that has been developed is text-to-speech, that is the general category which has been developed. And uh, as the name says so, right, text-to-speech, uh, this is an assistive technology that, which is a software, okay, that can be encountered uh, for the, as an extension for Google Chrome, okay? So you may download it in any computer that has um, Google Chrome as the engine for the studying in Windows, okay? And it's also available for Macintosh. So um, this is a software that is designed to help the students who have, who have difficulties, okay, in reading and also uh, for a standard print, and uh, which is uh, exactly directed in address to a student with dyslexia, okay. Uh, as it is a, a text-to-speech software, it is also directed for uh, blind students, which is something. Uh, that is very interesting, okay? Not not only uh, using Braille for the, the, the students which are blind, but also using text-to-speech software for them and, uh, you know, address or in our English teaching is somehow with a software and not necessarily um, having or getting somehow materials for, from Braille to use with this students, okay? And not only blind students, but also uh, students with any visual impairment may be included and, and be uh, having this text speech software uh, may be included for having this as a careful helper for them, right? There are also these text to speech software are also addressed uh, for students with autism, some degree of autism, included uh, students with uh, the syndrome of Asperger, okay, which is another very common uh, kind of autism that we can encounter within our classrooms. Okay, also students with ADHD, the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, which is another interesting thing that I'm, I will explain you how to use. Okay, and of course, any other intellectual activity that may um, be addressed as a difficulty of reading. Okay? Um, when we have, for example, disabilities, physical disabilities, and these students can, uh, have a learning disability or physical condition that impedes them in order to read a book normally or to you know, handle a book or manage a book normally, this text-to-speech software is also very useful for them. So how, 
how do these uh, softwares that I will explain you work? They, they have a very common basis, which is scanning the reading text that you have, probably in the book, in the document, or uh, notebook if it's handwritten. Okay, and what these uh, softwares do is scanning the text and the software read that text out loud for the students to listen. So if your student is blind or uh, if this student uh, have a visual impairment, they are just only required to listen to what this software did for them, which was scanning the text. And they are gonna be able to just just use their hearing in order to have the perception of the text. And of course, to learn what is said or to at least to comprehend instructions for an activity, for example, okay? That is the common basis for all these softwares. Of course, each software has a different feature that uh, make them special, right? Um, the important thing about this scanning is that all these software uh, during the playback, right? Uh, highlight the words for the ones, especially in this lecture, right? They highlight the words so students can pause when they get into words, for example, that they don't recognize because of the difficulty that they have when recognizing different letters. And also for the other students that don't know, for example, what the word means. During this uh, highlighting process, students can pause and listen to first the spelling of the word so they can recognize each word perfectly, each letter, sorry, in each uh, proper condition. So for example, if a uh, uh, dyslexic student uh, that confuses, for example, P with V, with this spelling feature, they are gonna recognize specifically what was that letter that they were confusing. And for the other students, of course, if they have difficulties with pronunciation or with the definition of the word, they are gonna have the opportunity to pause this software and to uh, realize on the definition if they don't know the meaning of the word or then on the pronunciation of the word by repeating the highlighted word in order to internalize and remember the pronunciation of that word. So that is another spectacular feature that these softwares include, okay? And uh, there are others which is very nice, not only for us that we are English teachers, but that include and support more than 18 languages around the world in dialects, which is something amazing because this is not only, you know, um, reserved for the English community, but it's a tool that around the world may be used for any learning in other languages. That's another good thing. And uh, what I was telling you here, uh, when we talk about definitions of the words, not only having the definition of uh, the word in English, also translating the word if it's necessary to their first language. And also uh, these uh, softwares include Pictionary. In the case that uh, your learners are young learners, you may include a Pictionary if you don't want to uh, have them translating the word. There's also Pictionaries there, okay? That you may, uh, well not you, but the software automatically uses if the, the student decides to watch a picture of the definition instead of listening to it or reading to it. So it has Pictionaries included, which is another nice feature from these softwares, okay? And for the ones, the students with uh, visual impairment, there's also the option for text magnification. So with, uh, with a little loop, you, make, you can make it really big on the word or the text, the part of the text you wanna see, you can magnify it and see it you know, bigger. So that's another good thing for the ones with uh, visual impairment, okay? So uh, let me show you the most popular ones. These are the most popular ones that we have, the first two here. Is this one is one of the softwares uh, that is free, okay, uh, and that you can download it uh, directly from the internet, uh, which is Carswell 3000, okay. And as I told you, this one, this text-to-speech software is the leader around the world, okay, and uh, you may download it. And as you as teachers may use it, if you want to have, you know, a one-to-one -one lesson, you may download it and use it with your special needs student or suggest 
parents, because this, uh, I'm going to remind you, it's, it's crucial having parent support at home when you teach remote classes with special educational needs students. So uh, suggest parents to download this software, okay, and to have it so you can address your teaching process with the different strategies and techniques that you are going to use having this software in uh, their computers, okay? So uh, as I told you, this is a software that does exactly what I have explained to you before. Uh, it will read out loud the text that have scanned and it's available for Windows and Macintosh. So there's no problem with the computer that they may have. Now, uh, there's a device, uh, which is another one uh, um, made by Intel, which is the producer of the, the RAM in the normal computers, okay, which is this one over here. It's the Intel reader, which is, does exactly the same as this software over here, okay? So the good thing about this, uh, this reader is that um, connecting a USB cable, you, the students are going to be able to or parents, according to the disability or necessity of the student, uh, will transform and uh, transfer the content that they got from the text to a computer, for example, and to print it if it's their option, right? If, if they wish, they may transfer the content and print it uh, so students can have the, um, the audio or the document for their further studies. And then this other one, which is a pen lecture, uh, this is already a, uh, available here in Ecuador. And of course, as I told you, if it's uh, the possibility of the parent is getting them, uh, this pen works like a, um, like a normal pen. Students just have to uh, have the pen and just scan it onto the, the printed document and it will automatically start reading it while scanning on the text, which is a really amazing tool. Okay, and uh, as I told you, when they want to pause because they don't understand a word, they may have a translation, and this pen is filled with the Oxford ELT dictionary, okay? And also, uh, when highlighting the word or pausing on the word, they are going to be able to listen to the uh, spelling of that word. So uh, these three um, um, subwords and uh, devices are the ones that are the most popular now in order to use uh, the, the feature if we need uh, for them uh, to read, okay? Um, then another thing which is low sophisticated technology, which I think is the, the, the most common ones now in regular basis when we talk about public schools, is using graphic organizers. Graphic organizers definitely um, addressing them in order to focus on our students according to the special educational need that they may show, right? So these graphic organizers can be very effective when we help our students, uh, uh, especially throughout writing processes. When we English uh, teach uh, writing processes, uh, I suggest and I recommend using uh, graphic organizers, okay? How do we use graphic organizers? Um, these graphic organizers, when we talk about a special educational needs students, are uh, specially recommended for students with dysgraphia, okay, and or uh, disorders of writing expression, okay, written expression, not only in the sense that they can not write wh while spelling a word, but also when writing uh, more sophisticated uh, chunks of text, like paragraphs and inclusively essays, okay, depending, of course, on the level that you are teaching. And uh, helping with organizing ideas, it also helps with conceptual aspects of writing. And I will show you how. There's an interesting tool that we may use in order to develop conceptual aspects of writing, not only organizing and helping our students to write better in English. These, uh, these graphic organizers, of course, may be uh, downloaded from the internet or might, may not be technological, but can be, you know, delivered through uh, for, for all our students in the handout form. 
So, of course, depending on how you're going to reach your students, if you're going to reach your students through WhatsApp or if you're going to reach your students through the Google Classroom, you may send them, you know, a PDF document or a Word document with the graphic organizer. And the clue is addressing the activity and uh, writing or telling the instructions correctly to those students with a special educational needs. Okay, so basically graphic organizers uh, work by helping the student to map out a course of action. Students with dysgraphia and uh, or disorders of written expressions uh, have problems with organizing ideas. And these students with dysgraphia or uh, disorders with written impairment come to you and they say, like, here, teacher, here's my paragraph. And you start reading, and, and it's like, it's very confusing. And it's like, okay, wait, let's see. Can you tell what you have written here orally? And then your student yeah. starts to tell you, you know, uh, a different thing, a totally different idea or a totally different context uh, from what you were reading in the paper. So that is the problem with the students with dysgraphia. They, they have this barrier in order to, spare, uh, to express in the written form uh, what they want to express, um, you know. Um, so, these organizers are the ones that help students to, you know, uh, live with this graphia. So, uh, the graphic organizers, um, actually, when we talk about handouts, okay, there's a really nice page which uh, contains tons of graphic organizers which is this one over here that I have cited here for you. You may probably take a picture or just copy the, um, copy the, the, the link, which is eduplace.com, okay? Uh, and uh, here you're gonna find graphic organizers for everything, okay? Uh, it, it may gonna find, uh, it may gonna help you in order to write paragraphs, in order to express just simple sentences, if they, the, the learners that you have are beginners, in order to structure uh, for um, stories, for example, if you want to write, make them write descriptive essays and so on, they, this place has everything and they are free, downloadable, okay? You may just select from those great variety that they have, you click on it and you can download exactly for the purpose that you want. This eduplace.com site uh, is designed uh, for, uh, they, they have a special link or tab where you can find um, templates for students with educational needs of dysgraphia and some special templates are there for you to download and make your students work on it. The, the, the good thing about this also is that you can use these, uh, these graphic organizers for your you know, regular students according to the goal that you have for your written class in that day, okay? If you wanna make them write an essay, if you wanna make them write just a paragraph, if you're teaching them what a paragraph includes and you know that your student uh, has uh, this dysgraphia or this written disorder, you may use those special templates and they are gonna see, and it's very simple for you, you're gonna see a step by a step how to do that. And you may uh, help them do it uh, without parent supervision, because this is something that they are going to produce by your, their own with your guidance. Talking about low-tech handouts, okay? Now, when we talk about uh, software, because this is this option, this option one is for you just to send through WhatsApp or any other uh, reachable device for your student. Uh, there's also this other draft builder, which is another software that it's also free that you can download from the, the web you know, directly. And I like this very much because it's like um, when you don't know how to uh, manage any device or when you don't know how to play a game, a video game, it tells you step by step how to write. And this is the, the, the good thing about the uh, draft builder because it's, it's, a, it's a tool, it's a software that integrates outlining, note-taking, and draft writing functions, especially for example, if you are gonna work with your students, not only in a paragraph, but for example, in a description of two or three paragraphs, or you know, in higher levels for essays, academic essays that they wanna write, 
this integrates uh, these note taking and draft writing functions to break down the writing process into three steps, as you can see here in this small picture. So in the first step of this draft, your student is gonna be able to just write words. If the problem, if, if it's a serious problem of dysgraphia and your student cannot organize ideas, it's difficult for them, they just can, you know, uh, speak out loud words, just tell you small ideas, two or three words together, but they cannot connect ideas in order to build paragraphs or um, imagine neither uh, essays. This thing is going to help the student step by step to do it with the help of the software assistant. The student is going to write words, is going to write a small, you know, two or three words together in the first step. And then on the second step, it's very easy just to drag and drop those words into an assistant that is going to build the paragraph for the student. And not only that, but the software is going to uh, check the spelling of the words because there may be problems of the students with not only dysgraphia, but dyslexia together. So these students may have problems when uh, writing the words because they misspell words. And this software, it's going to help them, you know, checking the spelling and correcting the words for them, which is another incredible feature of this. Okay. And in the end, for the final step, students are going to see their writing, you know, done. Okay. So they are going to be able to turn the essay, the tasks that you have delivered to them. Uh, they are going to turn in the activity because they were able to do it for you. So this is a really great assistant, not only for the students, but also for you teachers, because you know that your students are being well addressed in order to build up somehow the writing activity for them. Um, another interesting assistive technology that we have is this proofreading software, okay? Uh, this proofreading software acts uh, kind of for the text-to-speech software, and it's also uh, directed and addressed for students with dyslexia, okay? And those students which has mixed uh, these problems of dysgraphia, dyslexia, and aphasia now. Aphasia is um, an intellectual impairment that the students have in order to comprehend text in the same way as others. Uh, some of our students need the teacher to restate sentences to restate instructions, to use different words, synonyms, or inclusively graphics, because they cannot understand the meaning of the words that the teacher is trying to transmit. So when we have these uh, students, these kind of students, because we say, I don't know, I'm telling my student what to do, but these students don't understand. I, I have used a thousand of words, but even though they don't understand. So this might not be because the student cannot do it or doesn't want to do it. It's because the student may be facing a fascia. So when they have this disability, this problem, this educational need, it's better to have an assistant. And when we have to do these remote classes, when you tell your students through the computer what they need to do, they say, teacher, no, I don't understand. Can you repeat, please? And then you, you repeat it with restating the, the, the instruction using different words. It's like, mm, no, still, I don't understand. Then you may use one of these assistive technologies, which is a proofreading software. Okay, so this, this proofreading software um, goes above and beyond, you know, the typical proofreading features that we have in, in a word, for example. When we start typing, you know, like regular, uh, we type a, a sentence or a, a paragraph, the assistants, uh, the assistant in, in, in Word uh, spell checks, you know, it has the speller checker and they change the words for you. They, they give you suggestions. And also there are some ones that um, can broadcast for you some ideas, okay? And also now in Gmail, for example, when you write something, you have the, the option to have the word because they are trying to guess what you're writing and they give you some ideas to finish the sentence and to finish the statement that you want. This, this kind of proofreading software that we have um, has a processing system that is not only correcting the word that is misspelled with students with that dys dyslexia, but also in the case of the, 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 the probably the problem that they are facing, this software is like an, uh, an artificial intelligence that can um, 
perceive the idea of the context that you are trying to express, and they give you a suggestion as a paragraph of what you may write and may read out loud to you in order to see if those are the ideas or the sentences that you are trying to express. And if you agree with the software, it's that simply on just clicking on agree, and it will just out of the blue appears as magic, a chunk of text there expressing what you're saying. There's another possibility with the special sip and puff systems to read out loud the ideas that you want to express, you know, in written form, but you can't. And you can read or tell the device what you want to say in a written form, and this proofreading software type it for you. So this is very uh, advanced technology that we have now out in the world, which is very beneficial for our students and very advantageous for teachers and parents because you're going to avoid the difficulty of trying to understand a text that probably may not be very legible. Okay, so um, in this case of proofreading softwares, uh, we have these two ones, which are the, the most popular now uh, out in the market, with, which are Ginger and Got It. Both have free and premium options, okay, that you may download. And the good thing about these two, this Ginger and Got It, is that they are also available in the app form. You can download it to your cell phone, to your iPad, to your tablet. There's also this possibility for these two. Okay, they, you may encounter them as apps. Okay, so um, as I told you, uh, it has, of course, uh, which is very nice for both, a grammar checker. You know that uh, students with special needs deal with the structures, especially uh, dyslexic students don't understand about the structure. And uh, dysgraphia is also a problem for them when we need to make them write with syntax. The good thing about these two softwares is that you can, uh, just by downloading them and activating the feature, they are gonna check your grammar. And if you haven't written words in disorder, they are gonna order it for you automatically. And then there's another thing, which is subject-verb agreement. If your students, for example, wrote uh, the girl play instead of the girl plays, it will automatically help you with that uh, syntax problem, okay? So it's it, this, this uh, software which has been created recently, it's just such a nice thing that you may uh, use with your uh, special educational needs students. Uh, there's another thing which goes beyond text-to-speech software, which is this one that is a personal coach, meaning not that you're gonna have a person next to you to tell you what is wrong or not, but giving you the feature that this personal coach, if you need it by clicking on the option, uh, it will display you the reasons why you need to write that way. So for example, if you don't understand what's going on, if your student says, teach about why, why the girl plays? Why not the girl play? You know, I'm saying la niña juega, so what is wrong? So then if the student is not able to understand the teacher, they may go to the personal coach and the personal coach may display pictures, uh, videos, and also personal explanations in different words in order to explain this student why that grammar feature needs to be that way. So this is a very interesting thing also. It's a tool that if, for example, your students are not able to connect to your classes because they don't have internet connection, because they live in rural areas, if you ask them to download that and send them through WhatsApp, for example, the activities that they need to develop, they are not gonna need to have you next to them at a specific time because they don't have the internet connection, but using any of these two softwares in order to have their personal teacher at home the time that they can, because problem, you know, as I was telling you, connection problems, economic problems, if they don't have, for example, to pay for the internet connection, to be there in your class. So I think this is a very, very nice assistant uh, that, that may help you with the students, especially with the, the low income students uh, in, in their families, because uh, it's, it's gonna be uh, at, up to them and up to their face 
in order to go on with the grammar and with the, with that assistance, that, that the specific assistance that they need if they have a special educational need. So um, certainly this is going to be a, a, a really high you know, challenge that we as teachers may face because it's not easy having students uh, in regular basis because they may face any of these problems that I was telling you, but also uh, because um, they, they need and they require a special uh, attention, which sometimes parents, because they work, may not help them. And then it's us teachers, as always, the ones called, you know, to try to save these students and to learn and to guide their learning somehow so they can not be, you know, taken apart or uh, left aside, left back in order to go with their students at the same pace and learning somehow at their difficulties, how they may do it. So uh, definitely if we talk about uh, these three different types of assistive technology, which I think are the ones that our students in all reality may use, um, I was thinking that probably having uh, other specific devices for disabilities are going to be and are going to become a real high difficulty because, as I told you in the beginning, the system, uh, the educational system that the, the Ecuador is facing right now with all the crises around is not going to let us think a little bit ahead in order to help our students buying a specific electronic devices or buying a specific, uh, uh, I don't know, for example, chairs or softwares or systems that they may use physically speaking, okay? Uh, so um, in general, for these conclusions, okay, when we talk about the, ne the next steps when thinking about the special educational needs and we as teachers to teach these students with the special educational needs uh, to successfully use all these tools that I have shared with you, it's critical we as teachers to develop a plan for their use, right? Who have a different plan from the regular one in order to see if these students are really gaining, right? The most value possible and not just becoming dependent on these assistants, right? So somehow one or two days in a week, you may assess your students with the special educational needs using this assistive technology orally, for example, and asking them to see if they are able to produce something which you are directing and addressing to them alone, individually, without the assistance of this sophisticated software and not becoming dependent learners on that because they may tell you, no teacher, please, let me see, let me check and I will tell you. So no, you may take some of your time, you know, in order to assess your students to really see if they are, you need to be sure that they are gaining the most value possible from this assistive technology software. Okay, that is the first thing. Then, uh, of course, as these tools uh, start to appear, you know, at home and probably once we come back to the classroom, if we are able to use technology to have these in, into the classroom, will definitely help us, you know, and help these students achieve and academic, uh, you know, a reward and of course a personal growth because it, they they will make them fear feel more um, confidence on them to feel that they are not the strange ones within the group that everybody points them out because they know that they cannot learn at the same pace as the others. So definitely, this is another advantage that you may tell parents and that you have to take into account because definitely you are te as teachers are gonna feel that you're going to face how your student is growing academically and personally. And finally, of course, thanks to the rapid advances in this assistive technology that I have explained to you, uh, students, parents, and teachers, you know, are going to, you're, you're going to find out there in the market limitless number of tools and uh, all of the, the, the devices and apps that you may find at, their, uh, at your disposal, right? So just take some time. I know that we as teachers now with these online classes, it has been really difficult. We have 
lots and tons of work to do, material to create, and the ways to reach your students. So yes, we need to take our time to do this. And uh, I, I hope these are uh, all softwares that I have shared with you may reduce the time taken in order to look for some tools that you may uh, find useful for special educational needs students teaching. And of course, use them also with your regular basis students in order to develop somehow and to see if you can create a difference in teaching while using this assistive technology. Thank you very much. I'm now ready to answer all the questions that you may have. Okay, Paola, it was very interesting, your conclusions, everything you have shared with us. So, uh, well, teacher, so at this moment you can, uh, you can prepare your questions, okay, from the chat, or maybe you can activate your, your microphone so, and our special guest is ready to answer your questions, okay? Somebody can raise your hands even to to participate, okay? Um, I would like to participate. Hello, Andres, and hello, Carmen. everybody. Okay, okay, thank you, Carmita. Go. First of all, thank you very much. It was a very interesting explanation. Congratulations. You are well prepared for this topic. Uh, nevertheless, I don't want to me I don't want to be pessimistic. But uh, working with the students with special needs, especially the ones who are related with a disability, is really hard. I'm telling it because I have worked with them. And in our educational system, where we have uh, a minimum of three students, uh, it's almost impossible to give them special attention. And even in this situation, it's worse. Uh, why am I saying it? Before working as a teacher, I had the beautiful, the great opportunity. I consider it one of the best experiences in my life of working with students with special needs. I work in a project called uh, Atención Integral a Personas con Discapacidad Visual e Intelectual. Uh, I was prepared. I received capacitation for almost a year. I learned Braille and when I started to work, I thought, oh, I'm ready to do it. But in the first week, I wanted to quit. Uh, even I used to work directly with only one person, but these kind of people, they are so special, they are sweet, but they really face difficulties in learning. And it's really hard. Imagine when you have a group of, let's say, normal students, plus these students who were included in our educational system, that's great. But I really consider that the government should have both systems. The one where these students with special needs are included in the common, in the normal classes and their own groups yes. where they can learn in their own peace and etc. So I really consider that working with these students, it's really hard for us as teachers in the classroom. And now outside the classroom, throw apps or whatever is it's really, really, really hard because parents don't collaborate. And you said that uh, in some cases, they really won't need the help of the parents, but I really disagree because I had had the experience of working with them. So that's what I wanted to share. And again, congratulations. You gave us very good uh, tools and activities, but I think they really need more than we can do for them in the classrooms. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I'm not sure. Uh, Paola, I'm going to read a question that I have here in the in the chat. Okay, Veronica is asking about if there is a special format uh, for this uh, uh, in order to assist the students with special needs. Well, actually, uh, mm, well, first, uh, thanking Carmen for her comment. Definitely what she said is totally true. We all teachers of public education know how difficult it is to work with uh, students uh, with a special educational needs within the same classroom, 
within the four walls that we have. And then, yes, now remotely, if we don't have parents' support, it's going to be a mess. Or students or special students won't do anything. That's, that's for sure. Nobody can deny it. You know, it, it, that, that's the reality, the cruel reality that we have. And there, there's where we got to go. And, you know, at least, Carmen, the only thing that I was obviously thinking when, when, when I started teaching uh, special educational needs to students remotely, I thought, I hope parents help me at home because I'm trying to do my best. And that is our work, or job. Or, or spirit as teachers, right? We got to do and use all the technology possible, all the tools possible, do our best in order to address their learning and hope to have parents assistant at home in order to develop this process, teaching, learning in a well ending. But if it's not possible, of course, Carmen, what you said, it, it, it goes out of our hands, definitely. Now, uh, answering uh, Veronica's question, Andres, uh, when I was working uh, in high school the last year, I, I think it was like three or four years ago, I remember that the Ministry of Education sent a special template mm -hmm. using the same plan that we use for the regular basis classes. In the end, we were supposed yes. to uh, have a chart that says a special yeah. needs and to describe the, the, the need that the student have and to write the activities that we were supposed to do. But then having a special format for them uh, that we may create personally, we can do it. But I know that you need to comply with this uh, template that the Ministry of Education sent. So it, it is very simple, just, you know, uh, typing there, then it's the need that the student have, the activities that you are planning to develop with them, of course, with the goals and so on. And you may now that you know these assistive technology tools, include some of them in order to address the activities and the strategies that you are going to be using with your students now. Um, the other thing that I would like to, uh, taking advantage of Veronica's question, I would like to tell you is that I have developed a holistic rubric to assess mm -hmm. my uh, students with special educational needs. If it's possible, Andres, I will share it with you through your mail, through your Gmail, and sure. you may share with your audience because I have this holistic rubric that is very simple to fill up. It's not like a regular uh, rubric, of course, and you may use it, you can use that rubric to assess all of the necessities, all of the needs. Intellectual needs or disabilities are included there. It's very simple, just typing the activity that you need to uh, evaluate, that it may display you know, options in order to evaluate or assess the need. So I will share it with you, Andres, so you can share it with the audience also for them to use with the students that they may have with the special needs. It sounds great, Paola. Thank you. You can share with me, and also I can send back to the teachers. Um, pleasure. Okay, somebody else would like to make a question about this topic. Paola, uh, according to the robbery, the holistic robbery you mentioned, what I think it's great. Okay, so I was thinking about formative assessment, no? For example, in this case, for example, the holistic rubric, I, I think can benefit. It can be beneficial for these kind of activities, no? Where students are working every every single activity, no? So, what do you think about that? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Actually, uh, taking into consideration uh, from the three conclusions that I gave you, uh, on the first conclusion, I recommended you to create and to separate a specific amount of time in order to see the development of your students with this assistive technology. This holistic rubric, as you said, Andres, uh, talking about formative assessment will help you definitely to track the student as, you know, advances. So uh, it will be very crucial to use it not only as a formative assessment, but at the end also because, as I told you, uh, it may help you for different purposes. And uh, it, it's uh, when, when teaching a special educational student, uh, it's very important to see if they are really, really advancing and gaining knowledge. So, yes, you may use it as, as, a, as a track of pace on these activities. Yes. Thank you so much for your clarification, okay? Um, any other question? I don't read you in the, in the text, in the box test of the chat, teacher. So uh, somebody else can feel free for participating right now. So, hi, Paola. Hello. Hi, Carmen. Welcome. And 
Wow, what's your question? Yeah, so um, one thing that I, I was uh, considering, um, and um, probably it's kind of hard, even for, for teachers in normal classes, much more now that we are working with virtual classes, yeah? To work with, uh, with the students with the special necessities, you know, it's hard. But Paola, uh, do you consider, do you consider that we can have another uh, probably uh, techniques to, to work with these kind of kids through virtual classes? Do you know another one? Or can you give us another ideas about that? Thank you, Carmen. Yeah, it definitely it's, it's, it's a really uh, a good question. Um, a, we, can, we can do it. Uh, the problems, uh, the, the difficulties I, I, that come to my mind in this moment when I think about that is uh, that uh, having remote classes is not the same as having the student next to me and trying to address this student somehow with the knowledge that I have. So because of this, it would be, you know, ideal to have um, a specific time and a specific lessons only one-to-one -one with the, our students and trying to reach them with our personal and internal abilities, trying to reach and touch the personality of our students. That would be ideal because we may develop, you know, different activities according to the things that we know that these students have. But unfortunately, unfortunately, because